All right. We, I'm still trying to drag in somebody who's really got a bad case. Let me ask you this. Given the number of people who would see this periscope is happening, they're not all people who follow me. A lot of it is seen by the general public. Don't you think there were a lot of people who were serious anti-Trumpers who saw this and didn't come in? Why is that? Do you think that the anti-Trumpers on some level know that their opinion is not legitimate? Because that's what I'm starting to think. Because as many times as I've offered, now you've seen me do this a number of times, right? In public, and it's a pretty big public. I mean, a lot of people see that when a periscope is live, anybody who's looking for live periscopes can see all the choices. And it's right in my title. So you would think that this would have attracted at least some trolls, at least some people who were serious Democrats who really had a problem. Why is it that we didn't get any? Why is that? It's not because I'm scary, right? I don't think people thought, oh, if I go on his periscope, he's going to you know, belittle me and you know, insult me or something. Nobody thinks that. I don't think so. I think they don't want to lose their anger. I think that people have chosen a lifestyle and identity around hating Trump that is, is sparked by some kind of thing that rubs them the wrong way. There's something about his personality that you either like it or you hate it, but it's hard to be neutral about him. And the people who are, who are rubbed the wrong way have built a lifestyle around their hatred of him that, that connects them with other people who, who have similar feelings. But I'm starting to think, quite literally, this is no joke, I'm starting to think that nobody actually believes what they believe, even on a conscious level. They know that. In other words, I think the anti-Trumpers are completely aware that their criticisms are not actually technically accurate, but they're part of a team play. Now, they're not unusual. I would say that there are just plenty of people on the right as well, because it's a normal human thing, who have sort of chosen a lifestyle and will parrot whatever attacks seem to be popular or funny against the left. So we all have that tendency. But when I offer to deprogram somebody from a feeling which has to be a horrible feeling, imagine waking up every day and thinking you're in the, you know, the end times because of this president. I wake up every day, literally, I woke up today and the first thought as I got out of bed was, what a great day. <laughs> literally, I just thought, I'm waking, in, waking up into a great country on a sunny day in the summer. Things are going pretty well. No wars that we're, at least that we're getting into. Uh, and if you're waking up into this, this dystopian nightmare, which a lot of people seem to be waking up into, why wouldn't you want to change that? And the only thing I can, this is my best hypothesis, is that it's because it's who they are. It's not about what they're thinking. The thing that we see as a mental illness, actually, literally, I don't mean that as a hyperbole, it looks to me like actual mental illness, but I'm no mental illness expert, so don't, don't take my word for it. It just looks like it to me. But it's probably just some lifestyle integrity thing where people don't want to get out of their lifestyle style bubble, if you will. All right. My book, Loser Think, we'll talk about these things in more November 5th. It will be out the best book you've ever read in your life, or maybe most useful. And we'll talk more about this stuff another day. Until then, have a great weekend.